Hi, my name is Paul Roberts, and I'm here today to talk to you about the three pillars of true Shin Buddhism. Those are the three basic ideas that define the Dharma of Master Shinrin, Shinrin Shonen, and Master Renyo, Renyo Shonen. Now, these ideas appear over and over and over again in all the writings of our Dharma masters, and I remember when I first came to Shin Buddhism, nobody actually explained these basic ideas, and these ideas are critical if you're going to try to read Master Shinrin's writings or Master Renyo's writings. These are absolutely the core concepts that our Dharma masters were trying to explain over and over again. And there's so much confusion in the Shin Sangha today about what Shin Buddhism is and what the Dharma teaching actually is that I'm making these videos to help clear that confusion up. So let me start right now with the first pillar of true Shin Buddhism. And this pillar says that the first thing for us to do is for us to awaken our aspiration for Buddhahood. The basic truth here is that every single sentient being in the universe, underneath whatever covering they might have in terms of form, intellectual matrix, anything of personality, anything at all, whether it be on this earth or in some planet a hundred zillion light years away from us, every single sentient being has fundamental Buddha nature underneath whatever their particular uh, mask is right now in this life. And the desire, the deepest desire of every sentient being, whether they're conscious of the desire or not, is the desire to actually become a completely free and enlightened being. In other words, a Buddha. Every single one of us, whether we're conscious of it or not, wants to become a Buddha, a free being. I'll explain more about that in a minute. Now, if you don't understand this, then Buddhism, as promulgated by Shakyamuni Buddha, really is not going to make any sense to you. There are a lot of people today in the Shin Sangha, in the Zen Sangha, in other various sects of the Sangha, who talk about Buddhism as if it's sort of a mental health program, kind of a mental yoga, uh, a way of making yourself feel better, of dealing with your fear or your anger or your sense of being lost in a confusing and difficult world. And all those things are good. Buddhism really does have things to say to help with those difficult experiences of life that we all have the experience of being human, of being an egocentric being. But that's just the beginning. That's just a temporary business. The reality is that Buddhism is much more than that. Buddhism isn't about becoming temporarily free of your blind passions or your attachments or your delusions or your, or, or, or your, 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 your cravings or your aversions. Buddhism is about becoming permanently free. Because if you just become temporarily free, then next week or next month or next year or in your next lifetime, you could fall all the way back down to a state that's as bad or worse than the original state of suffering that drove you to look at Buddhism in the first place. Buddhism is not about becoming temporarily free. Let's talk about the things for a minute that we all experience that have driven us to look for the answer to life's deepest questions in coming to Buddhism whatsoever. The first thing is all of us struggle with what Buddhism calls our blind passions. We all have these great unconscious atavistic forces working inside us coming from places that we don't even know from our reptilian brainstem from things that have happened to us in our karmic past in earlier lifetimes, from our childhood, what Freud talked about as the unconscious, what Jung talked about as the collective unconscious. These are all great forces that are acting within us, making us go one way or the other in our thoughts and our feelings. They're blind passions. They're extremely power powerful in all human beings. How many of us have had the experience of falling head over heels in love and just being carried away 
by romantic passion, or the opposite experience of falling head over heels in hate and being filled with great hatred for somebody else so that we thought terrible thoughts about taking revenge, perhaps even murdering somebody else in the midst of our blind passion, or thought terrible thoughts about ourselves where we actually thought about taking our own lives because we hated ourselves in the moment so much. These are blind passions. They afflict us all. And then, for example, we have what Buddhism calls our attachments, which really are more accurately called our emotional cravings and our emotional aversions. These are the things that we have to have these things in order to be happy, or we have to avoid those things in order not to be unhappy. And the Buddha taught the Four Noble Truths that these cravings and aversions were a great cause of our suffering. Why? Not because of the craving itself, but because the nature of our lives is in permanence. So that sometimes the bread falls jelly side up and you get what you want in life, and sometimes the bread falls jelly side down and you don't get what you want or you get what you don't want. And as much attachment, as much emotional attachment as you have to one thing or another, that's how deep you're going to suffer when the wheel of, of life turns and you're not getting life the way you want. That, the Buddha said, is a great cause of suffering. And he recommended in order to, to relieve suffering that we lessen and ultimately eliminate our attachments. But having attachments, having cravings and aversion is a great cause of suffering. And then another great cause of suffering is the fact that we're all dealing with delusions and obscurations. We're not seeing life the world and ourselves as they really are. We're seeing everything through a matrix of thoughts and feelings, some of them conscious, some of them not conscious, that distorts our view of reality terribly. And we don't even know how distorted it is. It's like the water in which a fish swims. The fish doesn't even know it's there. So we have delusions and obscurations, things that are obscure and just hidden from us, things we can't even begin to think about, much less understand. These are all part of the problems of being an egoic, egocentric human being. And then on top of that, we have, we have vast ignorance. The nature of not being a Buddha is to be a being that's ignorant. And so now imagine if your life was such that you did not have any blind passions anymore. You did not have any cravings and aversions. You didn't have any delusions and obscurations. You didn't have any ignorance. Your mind wasn't full of monkey mind chatter of the yada, yada, yada that goes on in the back of our heads all the time without stopping, that we try to stop in meditation and we really can't stop altogether. And then once we stop meditating, yada, 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 it comes back again. Imagine being free of all that so that the innate wisdom, the innate compassion, the innate love, the innate peacefulness, the innate joy, the bliss could simply arise as our unimpeded Buddha nature. That's the goal of Buddhism. Awaken your aspiration for Buddhahood. This is the goal of Buddhism in all authentic schools of Dharma. Every single school of Dharma, the Hinayana, the Mahayana, the Vajrayana, the Tibetan schools, all of them, when taught properly, are orienting all of us to desire to become what Gotama became. Gotama became Shakyamuni Buddha. You and I have the potential and will one day become a Buddha. But the first thing, the most important thing, is that we wake up, we become conscious, we become aware that yes, this desire for Buddhahood is actually my deepest and most fundamental desire, more than my desire for health, more than my desire for somebody to love, more than my desire for enough food to eat, more than my desire to live this life. My fundamental desire is my desire for Buddhahood. The truth is, this life is a real short thing. It's a blip on a screen. All of us have lived for countless lives. We've been taking birth 
over and over and over again in form after form after form. And as Shakyamuni Buddha teaches, every single one of our lives has been essentially unsatisfactory. That's not to say we have no good moments. We do have good moments. We have moments of love. We have moments of joy. We have moments of laughter. But sooner or later, we all succumb to suffering to sickness, to death. Everybody we love, sooner or later, they will die. If you're fortunate, parents will bury, children will bury their parents. If you're unfortunate, your parents will bury their children. But we will all lose everything. And then we will go into another life, forgetting everything that came before. This is essentially unsatisfactory. All these things I talk about are unsatisfactory. And the Buddha said, everything I teach, everything, is about suffering and the end of suffering. The end of suffering is the beginning of Buddhahood. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm challenging you to do. I'm challenging you not to be satisfied with some deluded version of Buddhism that says, oh, let me see if I can scratch my itch and do a little meditation and make myself a little calmer and a little happier and a little less neurotic. That's not Buddhism. That's a very deluded, watered-down, westernized idea of Buddhism. Buddhism is about, I want to become a Buddha. I want to become a fully enlightened being. I want to come to the end of suffering. Nirvana, Nibbana, that word means the cessation, as in putting out a fire. It means the end of suffering. If you do nothing else in this life but awaken to the fact that your deepest and most profound desire is your own desire to become a Buddha, you will have made tremendous strides on the path of awakening. If you awaken to your desire to become a Buddha, it will be the north star in your life. When you feel yourself going off the path of awakening, it will pull you back. This desire for Buddhahood will pull you back. Shinran Shonen calls this Bodhi mind, the desire to become a Buddha. This is the first pillar of true Shin Buddhism. It's not about having some momentary experience of I'm here now or this is some wonderful moment. You can have momentary experiences, and I've had them, of absolutely horrific moments and still be a person of Shinjin. Shinjin is not about this moment. Shinjin is about the unquenchable conscious desire to become a Buddha. That is the first pillar of true Shin Buddhism. I'll be back shortly with another video about the second pillar of true Shin Buddhism. And like this video, I'm going to explain it in terms that are easy and simple that anybody can understand whether you've been studying Buddhism for 40 years or you've never looked at Buddhism until today. Buddhism, Shin Buddhism in particular, is made to be easy for any person from any culture, in any time, any planet, any universe, any galaxy, easy for anybody to understand. That's why Amida Buddha made Shin Buddhism the way he did, because he was interested in helping people who did not necessarily have the right stuff to be sages and scholars and saints and wonderful people. Shin Buddhism is simple and easy for the average person, for the plain person, for the illiterate person, for the person of no particular ability to live a sterling, outstanding life in any sense of being a good Buddhist. I wish you all the best, and I'll see you again shortly with the second pillar of true Shin Buddhism.